In this video we are going to look at how to implement player movement in a 2D top-down type of game in Unity. Uh, it will be an 8 directional movement. Hello, I'm Peter and welcome to the Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. The link to project files will be in the description. The assets used in this tutorial are taken from Kenny Assets. I strongly recommend you take a look at their site. The link to their site is in the descriptions as well. Let's see our setup. We have a ground which is sprite that is styled around our map. We have obstacle that is box collider 2D and rigid body 2D. So basically it means that our player, if he participate in physics engine, he will collide with this obstacle and he will be able to push it around. So let's go to our most important part, our player. Here we have a sprite renderer and because we will later be using rigid body 2D and box collider 2D, he has it as the prefab, but I have removed it for now because now we are going to use the simplest possible movement method, which doesn't require a physics engine. So let's create a player movement simple script and we will get going with the code. So the fastest way to get our player moving is first to get the input from the keyboard or a joystick and second to move the player. So first we need some variables. We will use horizontal input and vertical input to get the input from Unity and movement speed, which is public variable and will be, move, will be used to set the speed of our player. We have our variables ready. Now we need to create a method that will get the input from the player. We are creating a new method called getPlayerInput. It will store the input that Unity gets inside horizontal input and vertical input. We need to know why are we calling horizontal and vertical. Let's see in Unity, in edit, that project settings, there is tab called input. And here are all the axes that Unity accesses. And it doesn't matter if you are using joystick or keyboard or mouse, Unity will get the inputs according to those names. So let's open horizontal. You can see right away that we have horizontal as the name. This is the name that we are calling inside our function, as well as vertical. And Unity accepts left and right arrow, as well as A and D as the input, as well as the joystick input. So this is very good because we do not need to create a separate method to get the input from different devices beside the touch screen. Okay, with that out of the way, we need to now call the get player input. We can call the get player input inside update or inside fixed update. If our game uses physics heavily, we could get away with using fixed update to get our input. But if our game needs precision, so we have something like double jump, we should get the update. Uh, get the input from the update because update runs once per frame every frame while fixed update can run multiple times one time or zero time per frame depending on the physics calculations so i prefer to get the input inside the update to get the most precise input now we get the input we need to use it somehow so let's create another method called move player so move player will use the input that we got from the Unity to move our player on the screen. First of all, we need to calculate the direction that we want to move and we will use those two inputs to do that. And here we will use the simplest way to move the player around by using transform.translate. So translate just moves the sprite from one point to a given position by uh, given by vector 3 translation to make the movement smooth we're using time dot delta time and we are passing the direction vector but we are also normalizing it 
So normalizing is required because if we're using in the diagonal axis, we are getting one and one or negative values. Basically, the magnitude of the vector is then square root of two. Uh, it is 1.41, so it's almost 50% larger. The, the diagonal movement is much faster than the horizontal or vertical. That's why we normalize the vector. And the last thing we do is apply movement speed to adjust the speed of our player. So let's remember that we have get axis row here. So we're getting 0, 1 or minus 1. So we need to call this method somewhere. And the, it doesn't matter where because it doesn't use the physics engine. So we can use it in update as the input. So let's get back to the unity. We have movement speed set to 2. Let's play the game. And we can see our player is moving, but he doesn't collide with anything. So before we do anything else, let's see how we are using get axis row versus get axis. So as I said before, get axis gets the smoothed version of the input. And this just means that if you push the button, the player slides a bit as the input gradually decreases from 1 to 0. And it can be helpful in some games, like car racing game maybe, but here uh, I don't think we want this kind of behavior. That's why we are using get axis raw in every input. We need to focus on why transform.translate is not the best method to use well, let's re-enable the rigid body component, revert, and revert here. So now the player is participating in physics movement. And let's set the speed to something higher, just to make a point. Let's see. Our player is moving very fast. And you can see he's pushing the obstacle, but he's also overlapping it. And that can be a problem. Let's figure out how to use a better way to move our player. So let's change the movement move player script to use the rigid body. And to do that, we need to get the rigid body component reference. So we are adding a rigid body to the variable and we also want to access it from the start method. So we are, we are accessing the rigid body to the component and saving it as a reference value variable rigid body 2D. And we know that we have rigid body, but we want to ensure some, sometimes we want to ensure that we have this component. So we can apply require component type of rigid body 2D above the class name. So this component, uh, this uh, statement or what it will do, it will apply rigid body 2D to an object that doesn't have it if we add the player movement simple script to this object. So let's uh, focus on fixing the player movement. So as I said before, we need to change the player move method. And the best way to do it is to apply a physics engine. So we are just using the same direction vector, but now we're using rigid body to do velocity to move the player around. So let's see how does it work. So let's uh, maybe decrease the speed to 10 and let's enable it. And we can see we are achieving the same results. But now if we are colliding with our object, as you have seen before, we are not overlapping the object. The last thing that we have to do is apply rotation because now our player is a little strange. He doesn't rotate, he just moves around. So let's apply the rotation. We are going to create another method called rotate player. So here we have an interesting little method called a tangent 2. So basically we want to calculate the angle between our position uh, that uh, the way we are facing 
and the, the way we want to go. So it returns value in the angle between x axis, so the axis that in a Cartesian coordinate system goes uh, horizontally, and the 2D vector starting at the zero and terminating at the x y position that we are inputting. So basically, we are calculating which way we want to rotate, which angle. So this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and when is 70 degrees. So basically, a tangent two just calculates uh, the degree, uh, the angle between x-axis that in Cartesian system goes horizontally and the point that we are moving towards. So remember we have 0 and 1 as the input value or minus 1. So we can calculate that we want 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 27 degrees and the rotation is being set using angle that axis so it creates a rotation which rotates angle degrees around the axis. We are using z-axis as the rotation axis. And z-axis is the axis that faces from the player towards us, so from the screen towards us. So basically, we are setting our transform.rotation, so our angle that we are rotated, to the angle calculated from the a tangent 2, which can be, as I said, 90 180 and 2070, or the di all the diagonal axis as well. So let's see how it works, but first we need to call it. And the best uh, way to call it uh, would be to call it with update. And now you can see that we have let update move player in the update, but we should probably move it to fixed update as it is using physics. So let's save the script. And let's go back to Unity. Let's run the game. And now you can see that our player is rotating, but at the end he's always facing right direction. Why is that? Well, basically it is because if input is 0, 0, the A tangent is 0 and we are setting the rotation to be 0. So we should call here a little if statement, so if horizontal input is different than zero or vertical input is different than zero, so basically only rotate the player if we are pushing any arrows or if we are getting, giving it an input. And if no input is given, don't rotate the player. So now we should have a smooth eight directional movement with physics.